Before presenting spherical coordinates, let me remind you of the two different three-dimensional coordinate systems we've seen so far. The first is rectangular. The rectangular coordinates are three numbers that specify the positioning of any point in three space. And we draw three axes to help reference these coordinates. And this is the way that rectangular coordinates work. Let's say we have a point in space and we want to specify its location using rectangular coordinates. Well, then we specify how far front and back it is with its x-coordinate. So the x-coordinate is just some number that specifies how far in front or in back of the yz plane that point is. And then the y-coordinate specifies how far right or left the point is from the xz plane. And then lastly, the z component here measures how far up and down um, the point is relative to the floor or the xy plane. Cylindrical coordinates work like this. To specify a point's location, you first specify its sort of shadow in the xy plane using polar coordinates instead of uh, rectangular coordinates like this. So instead of specifying how far front and back it is and how far left to right it is, you specify its distance, that shadow, to the origin, which you call r. So that's not the distance of the point to the origin, rather the distance of the shadow of the point on the xy plane to the origin, that's r. And then you specify this angle that that line makes with the positive x-axis. So note that Oh, I forgot the z-coordinate. <laughs> Lastly, of course, the z-coordinate is, is no different than rectangular coordinates. The z-coordinate is how high the point is up from the xy plane. Uh, what I wanted to say is that um, the theta value is, um, you know, it's not necessarily in between 0 and 2 pi, but ranging theta from 0 to 2 pi is sufficient to um, specify any point in three dimensions. So given any single point, you can choose an r and a theta value where the theta value is in between 0 and 2 pi. I mention that now because spherical coordinates um, are a little bit different later. Uh, okay, so here is a third system for specifying the location of points in three dimensions. So let me get the axes drawn here. And again, let's just suppose that we have a point floating around in three dimensions. Okay, so the first of the spherical coordinates is going to be the distance of that point to the origin. So different than the r value, which is um, this distance in the xy plane, rho is the distance of the point to the origin. So real quick word on this Greek letter here. This is the Greek letter rho. If you want to um, attain that in, in LaTeX, you can just do backslash rho. It's not a P, all right? This is a P, this is a rho. So just draw it like I did starting with the tail, come up around like that. Um, okay, what's next? But once you have that line drawn, you do something similar to what we did with the R line when we are measuring theta. The next spherical coordinate, let me just switch up colors. The next spherical coordinate is the angle that this line makes with the positive z axis. So um, you draw this point wherever this point is in, in three dimensions, you connect it to the origin with a line, the measure of uh, that length of that line is called rho, and the angle that that line makes with the positive z axis is called phi. So in math we say phi instead of phi. I don't like the z here. Um, Okay, so if you imagine the different positionings of a point, let me even draw another picture so you get the idea. Like, let's say the point that I'm locating is down below the xy plane over here somewhere. You draw your row line, and it's extending sort of beneath the floor there. The phi that you measure is going to start at the positive z-axis, and it's going to go all the way down there like that. But the most extreme situation you could have is if your point is on the negative z-axis, and that would make a phi value of, of uh, pi, 180 degrees. So any point in three dimensions is going to have a phi value that's in between zero, that would be a point along the, the positive z-axis, and pi, that would be a point along the negative z-axis. 
Okay, so those are the first two of our spherical coordinates. Let me show you the third now. So we drop a shadow onto the XY plane and we draw that same R line that we had for cylindrical coordinates. The, the length of this line doesn't, it isn't one of our spherical coordinates. Um, it's just, I use that line for reference to make the third coordinate, which is the following. It's the theta value that we know and love from polar coordinates. So these three numbers will specify the positioning of a point in three dimensions. What I wanna show you now is how to go back and forth between rectangular, cylindrical, and spherical. So let me remind you of the sort of relationship between rectangular and cylindrical. This just came from the geometry. Uh, we saw that x squared plus y squared was equal to r squared, and that's because um, if you draw a triangle in the xy plane, you can see that this is the y value, this is the x value, and that's a right triangle, making r the hypotenuse. So this is sort of one of our conversion equations between rectangular and cylindrical. And then also from that triangle, you can extract the fact that x is r times cosine theta, and y is r times sine theta. Okay, let's uh, use that observation together with some of the geometry I see in this picture down here to get some conversion equations over to sphere coordinates. Well, I still have the same relationship uh, between the x and y coordinates and the theta, right? So I still have that x is our cosine theta and y is our sine theta, but the thing is r is not a spherical coordinate, it's a cylindrical coordinate but the geom geometry is still the same in this picture. So um, let's try and represent this green line, the R value of the point, in terms of the spherical coordinates that I have. Well, let's take a look at this um, sort of vertical triangle that's created by um, this perpendicular that I dropped to the xy plane from the point. So this is a right triangle with rho as the hypotenuse. And the R value, the cylindrical coordinate that I want to sort of get rid of here is the one of, one of the sides of that right triangle and the other one is the Z coordinate up here. Okay, so let's make some observations here. The phi angle is also up here because the row line splits the two parallel lines that are the positive z-axis and the perpendicular that I dropped. So this angle and this angle are the same from geometry. Um, that means that I can represent the r value in terms of phi and rho just by using trigonometry. So let me write that right here, let's say. I know that, let's see here, this is opposite over hypotenuse. That would be sine of phi is opposite over hypotenuse. So there's my rho. So that tells me that r is rho sine phi. And that's great because this gives me a way to swap out r, which is a cylindrical coordinate, in favor of these um, two of the spherical coordinates. So these equations get converted then. Okay, and lastly, let me come to the picture the vertical triangle again and try and see what the um, z coordinate would be in terms of spherical coordinates. So remember that the z coordinate is the height of this perpendicular that I dropped and I can again use trigonometry to express that in terms of rho and phi. Okay so I see that let's see relative to phi in the triangle z is the adjacent side and rho is the hypotenuse. So I should have that cosine of phi is adjacent over hypotenuse. So in other words, z is rho cosine phi. And that completes the conversion from spherical coordinates over to rectangle, rectangular coordinates. Oops. So on the right-hand side of these equations, you see rho, phi, and theta. And on the left-hand side, you see x, y, and z. So these, cord these equations are going to be really good at converting from spherical over to, um, uh, to rectangular. So I've got them rewritten down here. And one thing that I want to notice, I can notice this in a couple different ways. I think e it's easiest to see in the picture. 
that since rho is the distance of the point to the origin, I know that rho squared should be x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Okay, it's worth noting something about the angles phi and theta. Let's take a globe, and then I want to imagine fixing a particular theta or phi value and seeing how it sort of cuts the sphere. So let's start with the phi value. So phi is a measurement of an angle from the point to the positive z-axis. So let me just like fix a point on the surface of the sphere that's something like, I don't know, like, like 30 degrees um, away from the positive z-axis. Well, what are the other points that have that same angle for their phi value? There'd be like a little ring around the surface of the sphere for some fixed phi value. Let's say that this is something like phi equals pi over 6. Okay, and then let's take maybe a phi value of pi over 2. That would be all of the points on the surface of the sphere that, are, that make an angle of pi over 2 with the positive z-axis. Well, that's going to be the equator, I think, like this. And then, of course, you have everything in between, and I can go to the lower hemisphere. Let's mark something like phi equals 3 pi over 4. That would look like that. So the phi values actually give us latitude, latitude markings on the sphere. And that's exactly how the latitudes are measured in degrees on the globe. Okay, and what about theta? What does theta give us? Let's do that in blue. So let's think about the points along the sphere that have a theta value of like zero or something like that. Um, well, something right along the x-axis would have a theta value of zero because when you sort of draw a line from that point to the origin, that line makes an angle of zero to the positive x-axis. So this has a theta value of zero. Um, what else would do that? Maybe a point over here whose shadow on the xy plane again coincides with the positive x-axis. Then when you do this sort of procedure right here where you draw lost my cursor. So when you draw the shadow of that point on the xy plane and draw a line, that line again is coinciding with the positive x-axis, so you're getting a theta value of zero. And so you can convince yourself that anything along this longitude, oh, did not do a good job, okay, this right here would represent theta equals zero. And then of course you could sketch out other uh, longitude lines corresponding to different theta values in between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, and then um, as we mentioned before, rho, rho gives the distance of the point to the origin. So I think it's helpful to put these, um, you know, this new coordinate system, spherical coordinates, into a familiar context like this.